my name is Suresh Joseph. I am a senior citizen, uh, born and brought up in Kerala. Uh, right now, I work uh, as a consultant in Chennai. But uh, before that, I have had a 40-year-old career working in various fields. I joined the Indian Railway Traffic Service in 1981. I worked in the railways for about 25 years during when I was also on deputation to the Container Corporation of India for five years. Uh, then I took voluntary retirement with the idea of uh, uh, joining the private sector. Uh, I was fortunate to be uh, chosen by DP World from Dubai who were uh, setting up a greenfield project at Vallarpadam, a container terminal in Vallarpadam. So I was chosen uh, to head the project as well as to run the existing container terminal of the Cochin port, namely the uh, Rajiv Gandhi container terminal. Travel has been a uh, part and parcel of my life from a very young age. Uh, for instance, during the summer vacations when I was in school, I used to go to be with my uh, grandparents in Kanjarapalli. Those days, my grandfather used to own an ambassador and he was very proud of his car and he made sure through the driver that it was maintained exceptionally well. And uh, once a week, he used to make these uh, trips to either uh, Cochin or to Kotem. And I used to accompany him. And uh, those trips, uh, you know, gave me the initial exposure to travel. And uh, uh, thereafter, when uh, we were slightly older, my, myself and my brother and sister, my parents used to uh, visit uh, Chennai from Trivandrum uh, every Christmas. And that again was uh, done in an ambassador car. And those days, as you know, you know, the cars were not as uh, good as they are today and uh, the roads were in a terrible uh, condition. But, uh, you know, the kind of preparation which my mother uh, made to make that uh, trip enjoyable, uh, each one of us kids was given a kind of a task to do. Uh, um, one of us was to record songs which we would uh, listen to on the way. Uh, my sister would be assisting my mother to make uh, biscuits and uh, some eatables which uh, we would have on the way uh, so we, we we were part of the planning process and we really enjoyed it and we look forward to every Christmas vacation and then my father's uh, uh, contribution was you know to I mean what I learned from him during these trips was uh, that we will face a lot of challenges whether it is in travel or in life but if you think about these challenges and try to think through a solution think on a cool head, you will be able to find solutions which uh, uh, you can get the challenges over very, very quickly. Uh, so these were, uh, you know, bonding times with the parents and as well as uh, helping us to understand how travel can be very, very enjoyable. And there are certain value systems also which came to us uh, in those travels. For instance, uh, we had a very old driver called uh, George. Uh, so wherever we stopped for a meal, my mother ensured that we served George first because not only was uh, he being accepted as part of the family, but he was the uh, he was an elder person. So we were told that, you know, you have to respect those people. They may be working for you, but that doesn't matter. They are part of the family and you respect them. So these kind of value systems got added on to your life as, uh, you know, these travels uh, went on for about five, six years uh, then. As I was growing older, you know, travel was becoming part of my uh, life and uh, it was part of uh, part of my uh, work too. Uh, then after I left uh, the railways and joined uh, DP World, uh, five years, uh, that was between 2005 and 2010, very, very tough time. But then uh, I insisted uh, with my management that I would take a break for about two to three weeks. And uh, this was done uh, not only with a view to, uh, you know, sort of recharging one's batteries, but I always found that it was necessary to develop your next level of management. So when you go away and uh, you, uh, I mean, empowerment is uh, something which has been beaten to death It's a, uh, as a concept. But then that is something which you do with the next level. You take that uh, three weeks uh, and fully empower them and make sure that they learn on the job and they learn to become better managers with every passing year. So I definitely took those breaks, uh, even though the job demanded, uh, it was a very, very stressful and uh, tough job. Uh, those days I used to do a lot of backpacking. So I've uh, traveled to Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, all backpacking. Plus uh, I took the opportunity to drive around uh, Kerala.
But the very serious part of driving actually came about after my contract with uh, uh, DP World in 2010. Uh, once I had completed that, uh, I decided that I should go and see my country fully. Uh, I made a plan to visit all the 28 states of India. Those days it was 28 states as well as the 17 railway headquarters having been a railway person. <clears throat> So, um, uh, at that time, after, just after I had uh, uh, taken leave of DP World, I didn't have a vehicle to travel in. In fact, I had a Maruti 800 which my wife was using and I had been using a, um, an, uh, an official vehicle till then. So, I was at a loose end as to what to, you know, how to travel. So, one of my friends uh, offered uh, a Maruti Swift, which I had never driven before. And uh, I started on the 1st of October 2010 uh, and uh, decided to, uh, I mean, it, chart my own way. I mean, it was, I, I was planning uh, on the go. It was not as if, you know, I had planned for three weeks later. But then uh, since I had a lot of railway friends, government friends all over the country, it was not that difficult. And from one, I would get a reference for the next place. So I was able to cover the whole country in a, in 124 days and that was a, a real eye-opener because it uh, shattered a lot of templates you know for us uh, you know one of the things that uh, happened to us uh, as Indians particularly is you know the uh, the northerners called the southerners as uh, uh, Madrasis for instance you know in fact in the railways I was referred to as a Madrasi for them whoever lives south of the Indians is a Madrasi and similarly for the South Indian you know whoever lives uh, on the eastern part is a chinky with those kind of templates but when you travel around you see the differences you find the kind of tremendous uh, cohesion in the kind of diversity that have, we have in the country it was a complete complete eye-opener and moreover what that trip also accomplished for me was to set new goals and travel uh, fortunately for me, you know, Limka Book of Records uh, took up that uh, uh, drive which I had done all over India and uh, presented me with a um, certificate of uh, excellence. It, they recognized it as a record. My next drive uh, actually was to uh, uh, better uh, uh, the time taken to travel between Kanyakumari and Leh. The then record was about uh, 130 hours and uh, I was able to complete it in uh, 99 and a half hours when I drove from Leh to Kanyakumari. So those, you know, those uh, trips, again, it was in a Swift, it was in a Maruti Swift. There were a lot of challenges, but uh, the thrill of uh, breaking records and also doing something very different. And as you are aging, you know, people are telling you, don't do this. I mean, you are, uh, you, you're being very foolish. You're taking up things which you shouldn't be doing. But, you know, when you prove them wrong, you, you get a much greater thrill, you know. And then uh, you find that there are youngsters who are wanting to follow that kind of a trail. Because I was uh, well past my 50s. I was getting closer to the 60s. Uh, then I uh, did a few travels within the country, breaking records after record. And then I embarked on uh, something which had not been done before uh, uh, from India. Uh, I uh, planned a trip from Cochin to London by car in a Ford Endeavour. I had two companions with me. There have been a lot of documented uh, trips uh, of people coming from uh, England to or England or the continent to India. But there, were, there is, I mean, till we uh, did this, there was no documented uh, uh, trip done from India to London. So we did that uh, trip uh, in 75 days, uh, starting from the 16th of June to the 29th of August, uh, 2014. It was a fantastic trip uh, going through uh, 25 countries, 25,000 kilometers, uh, something which uh, should have become a historical uh, uh, fact. But then, you know, during the uh, trip, there was a fallout between uh, me and one of the uh, co-passengers. So that gained a lot more traction than actually the, the achievement of having uh, done the, the trip to London. But anyway, nevertheless, uh, that again motivated me to try out uh, driving uh, elsewhere in the world. So then my next uh, international travel was to go from Cochin to Singapore and back. It was a return trip uh, covering most of the countries of Southeast Asia. 
then I did a Trans Himalayan drive, which uh, even to this date I would say was one of the toughest uh, uh, drives I have done. There was uh, vandalism on route. There was, uh, you know, the road diversions because of uh, certain uh, uh, unlawful activities, and those kind of things happened. It was a very tough uh, drive. Then uh, I would say that the mother of all drives was when uh, in 2016 I bought a new XUV 500 and traveled from Chennai to St. Petersburg on the Trans-Siberian Highway. I would say that uh, you know that was a kind of an icing on the cake. Uh, later of course I did the Trans-Canada Highway from Victoria to Newfoundland and back. Then last year I did a drive in Turkey. So I've been doing a lot of these kind of trips and so far I've done 15 drives. Recently I was in Botswana. I traveled around the country. I went to Mozambique, drove around there. So these kind of things have been going on and uh, every drive sort of uh, uh, pushes me to achieve something more, travel uh, more. Because uh, one of the things that I find is that wherever I go, I find something new and I learn something new. It makes me a better person. And one of the things that people have asked me is uh, about my traveling alone. Uh, just for the sake of viewers, I would like to say that I claim that uh, I'm the only person on the planet today who has done the four longest highways of the world alone. Uh, the longest highway in the world is the trans, uh, the, that is the Australian Highway 1, which is 16,500 kilometers. Then comes the Trans-Siberian Highway, which is about 11,000 kilometers. Then the Trans-Canada Highway is 8,000 kilometers. And the fourth one, surprise, surprise, is the Indian Golden Quadrilateral, which is about 5,800 kilometers. So I've done these four alone. So I don't think anybody else has done that uh, so far. Now, uh, uh, one of the things that I do is uh, I use these drives when I drive alone as a means to introspect, as to look at myself because uh, with nobody around, I am able to do a much more honest introspection of myself as a human being, as a societal person, as an organization man, as a family man. And I would say that uh, starting from 2010 up to now, over these uh, dozen years, uh, it has changed me considerably. And I feel that I have uh, uh, matured, I have become more patient, and I feel that I'm a much more contented person in life uh, is uh, something what travel has uh, done to me. Uh, before coming to Oman, uh, I had uh, traveled to 52 countries uh, around the world uh, in five continents. Uh, Antarctica and uh, South America have still not, uh, it's still on the drawing board. It is uh, on the anvil. I hope to do that next year if uh, travel restrictions are fully lifted. Uh, I give myself a birthday gift every year. My birthday falls on the 14th of uh, May. So I try and uh, travel to a new country. And this year, uh, I decided to travel to Oman because this is a, you know, it was, it was a kind of a desire that had been uh, within me for many years because in 2008, uh, the Cochin port had hosted the Volvo Ocean Race. At that time, there was a very special uh, craft brought, uh, it, it was uh, reconditioned, I think, in, uh, in Kerala. It, was, uh, it used to ply between Salala and uh, the coast of Kerala. Uh, so and then you know the history behind this uh, trade between Oman and uh, Kerala was so beautifully described on the plaque kept uh, in front of that uh, Uri that uh, I said you know sometime I must do that you know I've been so busy traveling over the last 10-12 uh, years that Oman never happened and I said you know this is the time for me to do it you know turning 64 in Oman would be a good thing to do so that is how I chose Oman because uh, one more thing is that uh, you know the uh, uh, Oman government has enabled an e-visa so that becomes easier you know you don't have to go and uh, uh, get into the hassle of going to an embassy and thing, getting things done so uh, I decided on Oman and I, I've heard about the uh, hospitality and the uh, and the friendliness of the Omani people. So I, th I thought I should come here and experience it first hand. I had a cousin who used to uh, work in the port in uh, Salala and then he had told me that this is a place which you should never miss out on. 
So uh, I will finish my travels in Muscat and then I will take a bus overnight to Salala so that I don't uh, waste a day time and spend about three or four days in uh, Salala and come back to Muscat and return to Chennai. So uh, what I have seen in uh, Muscat over the last two days has certainly uh, reinforced the kind of belief uh, I had about the Omanis, you know, very friendly people. And there's so much to see in this place. In fact, there were many people, you know, when I decided on coming to Muscat, people are, what is there in Muscat for you to go and see? I mean, you've been to Dubai. What is there in Muscat? But when I came here, you know, right from the air, you know, the kind of natural beauty that is there, you know, you, you find that even though there has been, uh, the, there are things of human development to see and, uh, uh, you know, delight in. They are surrounded by natural beauty, you know, that is it. And there's no artificiality about uh, this city. And I'm sure the same uh, goes for Salala and other towns of um, uh, Oman. And this is a city with a soul, or this is a country with a soul, which I wouldn't say for most countries, you know, people go to Singapore and Dubai and other places, but you come here to experience uh, humaneness, you, you can see the human spirit in the city. If I were to choose the, uh, uh, my favorite among the countries that I have traveled to so far, uh, I will disappoint you because I will say that, you know, every country that I have traveled to, as I said earlier, not only do I learn, there is so much to experience, you know, every country has taught me something different and I have, I have really loved to be in every country, you know, places like Myanmar uh, or uh, go to, a, you know, Finland or Norway, every place you have something uh, new, something good and uh, something fabulous to uh, enjoy. Uh, but if I were to choose uh, a place where I would probably want to settle down, uh, if I had the money, I would settle down in New Zealand because I would say that uh, with the shorter duration of human settlement that has been there in New Zealand, it's probably less than 1000 years of human settlement there. The, the environment is much more pristine than you would find anywhere else. Of course, I have not been to uh, many of these uh, uh, other countries, you know, atolls and others, which are considered to be in very, very pristine condition. But as a country, I would say that uh, New Zealand is a country which is preserved so well and people are so proud of their environment and they do everything in their uh, power to ensure that uh, the en environment is looked after well. That is one. But uh, being a retired government servant, uh, I feel that, you know, I'll feel more, much more comfortable settling down in Southeast Asia, in uh, say countries like Vietnam, Laos or Cambodia. Uh, there are two, three reasons. One is that, of course, your uh, pension goes a much longer way. Uh, you, you can lead a comfortable life there with the kind of money that you have. Second thing is the warmth of the people, which you will never find anywhere else. The, the, South, East, uh, the South Asian uh, hospitality uh, is something which has to be experienced to be believed. I mean, it's uh, uh, not only are they friendly, but their food, their uh, uh, habits, their cultures, the history that they have, they have, uh, I mean, I, I have become a great fan of the Southeast Asian uh, countries. So if I were to choose uh, where to settle down, if I don't have the money, it is definitely one of these Southeast Asian countries. Uh, tips for uh, budding travelers. I mean, uh, one of the things is, of course, uh, something which I do, I'm very, very passionate about doing that. I do a lot of, I spend a lot of time researching uh, about the place where I go to because uh, not only should you know about the place where you're going, uh, you should also be aware of what are the do's and don'ts in that place. I mean, that is something which is absolutely required when you're traveling to uh, uh, countries in the Gulf and Europe. Because, you know, for instance, when you uh, get into a religious place, what are the kind of uh, uh, traditions that are observed? Uh, what are the kind of, uh, how do you drive on, um, on the roads? What are the road rules that are there in that country? So you should do as much research as possible because today, most of it is available online. You don't have to go and uh, spend a lot of time researching it. So first one is to do as much research as you can on the places that you want to visit. Uh, the second thing is, uh, of course, uh, 
plan the season. Uh, there are uh, places, for instance, people have asked me as to why I came to Oman in uh, summer. You know, it's, it's blistering, uh, blisteringly hot here. But then uh, I came here for one reason, because uh, uh, this every season has something to offer to uh, any visitor to any country. But if you come during the non-peak season, uh, the rates are lower. Uh, you are not jostled by crowds, so you can choose. I mean, if you, uh, the peak season is probably when, even though the rates are high, all the attractions are open, and probably you see the best of what you know the the normal tourist uh, guys see. But to me, you know, the, uh, the the crowds and also you know the the way in which I can uh, budget my trip is important to me. So choose your season. Uh, the third thing is. Uh, uh, it's always better to get in touch with somebody uh, local because uh, you know we normally make a mistake of trying to go and uh, do things uh, uh, which are not acceptable or you should be careful about you know uh, in Malayalam there is a thing you know see that is something where you know people land up in trouble because I feel that particularly after dusk you should always ensure that there is somebody local available with you if you want to go to you know whether it is a pub or night spots wherever you want to go to you must ensure that you have a, 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 a local guide who can make sure that you are not in the wrong place at the wrong time so that is one thing uh, the fourth thing which i would like to say especially for people who want to drive uh, many countries have zero tolerance to liquor so it is advisable uh, to stay off uh, hard liquor during your travel and especially when you're doing uh, guard sections when you're doing hill stations it is not advisable because it dehydrates you it can disorient you and uh, you may get into trouble with the local authorities so these are things which you have to be very very careful about uh, the fifth thing i would say is uh, make sure that you that you have uh, the financial backing the funding that is available because uh, you will find it very difficult to go and find a, you know a good soul who may uh, lend you uh, a helping hand at all times but uh, having said that I have always found that I have got the kind of help I wanted wherever I have been but it's always better to make sure that you earmark uh, adequate funds your trip and in today's uh, circumstance you know you can travel uh, quite cheap because you get budget accommodation you get budget travel uh, food is uh, cheap especially if you uh, decide to uh, experience um, uh, street food I mean it's exceptionally cheap and extremely nutritious and very safe so these are the uh, few things that I would like to park with you uh, if you're embarking on a travel uh, uh, life when I travel one thing which I do is that I don't stay in touch with my family I don't connect with them at all uh, again I told you earlier that when I go on a holiday uh, from my office I don't connect with my office because I want to make sure that they stand on their own feet I do the same thing with my family because my wife is today I think she's happier when I travel because she gets it she's got the time and space to develop and so have my children so uh, the, I developed uh, this habit of writing a blog every day from the uh, uh, time I started my All India trip. Uh, I write, I blog every day and I make sure that it is up uh, by the next day morning. Uh, that is my communication with my family because they get uh, a snapshot of what I have done the previous day. So that's my communication. and. Uh, Another reason why I, uh, you know, I feel that uh, it's uh, better to uh, have as little communication as possible is because it can disturb them and it can disturb you. Because suppose, for instance, there is uh, something which happens where you know they need help, and you are uh, say in on the Trans Siberian Drive, there is nothing that you can do, and you will only be uh, you know getting more tens, and you will not be enjoying your drive, and they will also be tens as to how that has affected you, those kind of things. So, I feel that. Uh, uh, these kind of uh, uh, you know situations also try to uh, fortify the defenses of those people who you have uh, uh, left on their own. Uh, so therefore, uh, blogging is is a habit now. So whenever I travel, I blog. But in the recent past, I found that you know not many people are interested in reading. Uh, 
so vlogging has become the kind of a you know uh, the, the the kind of fashion now but unfortunately you know uh, I like uh, I, I can't stand in front of a camera and talk for myself unless of course there is an interview or somebody has asked me to talk about something so I'm not a good vlogger so I don't vlog but I continue with my blog but I have done something else you know I write a short uh, synopsis and post it on uh, Facebook along with photographs so that has become quite popular so I documented that way I write my blog then I put it on uh, uh, Facebook and then uh, uh, so far, I have written eight books. Uh, seven, of, seven of them are uh, travelogues, starting from my uh, uh, All India Drive. The last one which I wrote was the book which you referred to as Maple, Moose and Me, which is uh, my experience of driving in Canada on the Trans-Canada Highway. As you know, Maple is the symbol of Canada. Moose is the uh, national animal and uh, me traveling in that country so that was the last book I wrote in 2019 uh, I have traveled but then I find that uh, you know publishing has become a bit more expensive so I thought I will spend uh, that money traveling because I feel that probably I may have another five six years of travel left so I must see as much as possible use my savings to that effect by the way I don't uh, get sponsored so I use up my savings uh, I make it a kind of a contract with my employer that uh, uh, I travel for two months in a year so I work only 10 months so whatever surplus I am able to get from that I put into my travel